Well, uh, pretty much what they've been showing. Uh, you know, they're ranked eighth in the country in terms of uh, their passing offense, and I think they build around that. Um, you know, you can't. Uh, I think they throw and set up the running game. You can't forget about the, the running game. Um, you know, he's a guy that's going to drop back, that's going to throw. He's um, not a guy that they design running plays off of necessarily, but um, they do have a, a, a running attack that's uh, dangerous in the MAC in the two games that they've played. Juwan has uh, averaged, I think, 6.9 yards a carry. Uh, they're starting running back and I think is somewhere around 120 some yards a game in the two MAC games that they've played. And, and so um, even though they're, they're getting all these yards and putting points on the board, scoring touchdowns, uh, through the air, uh, the running game will also be a crucial part of it for us to uh, attempt to stop. So um, they're very good at, at what they do. You know, they they know what they want to do, and, and they go about it very efficiently. Um, how similar is the cir circumstance that that Bowden's facing in Akron to to what you faced when you came here eight years ago? And, and can there be any parallels drawn between what they're trying to do and, and what you guys have been able to accomplish? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know about, uh, I've not delved into Akron's background in terms of what they've been all about over the last 40 years, you know, but uh, um, I, I think any time you take over a, a program and it's not been winning at that point in time, obviously there's similarities to other guys taking over programs that haven't been winning. And, and um, but yet um, on the side of uh, you know where they're at right now. You know I think they've got good players in their in their system. Um, they've got great facilities. You know when we took over, it was a matter of trying to uh, get some facilities upgraded and some facilities built. And, and um, you know they they have what they uh, what they need in in place. That's a great way to start. Um, you know they're around a ton of people in the Akron, Cleveland area uh, down here we were not so there, there are also some differences I guess is, is what I'm getting at but but uh, taking a program that uh, was not successful prior to you taking it over um, always requires building and requires some time in saying it requires some time it's usually to that means to get it to where a coach really wants it that doesn't mean that the, that a team uh, that is on the field doesn't have a chance to, to get great things done because, you know, in the first two years we were here, we, we got some things accomplished that, uh, uh, you know, we felt pretty good about. Akron's quarterback is fourth in the FBS in passing yards. Um, and you've also this season faced the leader in passing yards with King Kato. How similar do you think their offensive attacks are between Marshall and Akron? Um, you know, there's, uh, I'm sure, some similarities. Um, uh, you look at Cato, and, and, and uh, he has the ability to roll out and do a lot of things on that end of it. And um, So they utilize his running skill at times, I think, uh, as well as his, his throwing skill. Um, I think Akron is, uh, they've got excellent receivers, very similar to, uh, to what Marshall has. Um, Quarterbacks able to put the ball right where you, right where it needs to be put, and, and so there's a similarity there between those, those uh, two quarterbacks. And obviously, the style of offense is is similar in, in terms of spreading you out. Um, a lot of receivers that, uh, uh, that that you have to defend on, on uh, every given down. So I, I guess there are similarities, but you know, having studied uh, Akron just a short amount of time in preparation for him now. Um, I can tell you a little bit more in the middle of the week, but there are definitely similarities. What is, uh, what is, you've seen Williams for four years now. What, what is it about this offense this year that's allowed him to become more productive? Is it, is it confidence? Is it scheme? You put your finger on why he looks like a different guy this year? Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. Um, you know, obviously he has more opportunities to throw the ball. It is a different scheme. Um, they're approaching things differently. Um, he's got a good group of receivers, so it all kind of adds uh, up. It's the direction that they want to go um, offensively, and, and so um, 
I think they're very settled on, on their approach and knowing what they want to be about, and, and I think that, uh, that helps a great deal. Uh, Akron gives up 211 yards per game on the ground. Uh, any further plans to impl implement Ryan Boykin even more into the offense? Well, Ryan will um, share time with uh, with Bo. You know, there there were our two rough, top running backs uh, uh, coming out of spring ball. There are two our two top running backs in in fall camp. Um, Bo obviously earned earned the starting role, and and uh, we'll start. We'll get plenty of playing time. And uh, but uh, Ryan, on the other hand, um, also deserves playing time, and so he's he's going to get his uh, his opportunities and. And I think if you look around the country, you don't see too many teams with just one guy. You know, you, most teams anymore seem to have two or three guys that um, that are getting some things done for them. And so we feel we feel good about our depth at running back uh, and what those guys are going to be able to accomplish. So uh, plenty of room to put both guys and and maybe even a third guy. We'll see. You come into this week ranked number 26 in the AP poll. Is there any talk amongst the players about you know a win this week? Is that had extra motivation that probably a win this week will put you in the top 25? No, I don't. I don't. If, if there's been talk, I sure haven't heard it. Um, obviously, they're pretty bright guys. They're not going to talk like that around me anyway. But uh, um, you know, I, our focus has never been that, and um, we understand what it's going to take for us to continue to be successful. We don't want to be a flash uh, in the pan. Um, you know, we want to be able to do things consistently and in order to do that, you, you can't be looking that far down the road. You know, you've, you've just got to take it one, one game at a time and, you know, even if, and I doubt that this game will necessarily get us in the, in the top 25 should we win it. Um, you know, that's, we're, we're just trying to put together a game plan that's going to give us a chance to be successful against us, against them, knowing that they're, that they're uh, uh, going to play very well and play very hard, and, and it's going to be a, fo a football game. Uh, Coach, you mentioned um, your depth, obviously, long-term injury to Jordan Thompson, long-term injury to Xavier Hughes, among others. How important is your depth going to be uh, in a game like this? Well, it'll be important throughout the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we... We, we don't, we can't keep getting the types of injuries we're, we're getting and, um, and ha have it go the rest of the season uh, that way and, and feel that any amount of depth is going to suffice. And, and so um, things seem to have a tendency to even out and, uh, and so we're ready for a stretch of no injuries and uh, hopefully that, uh, uh, that, uh, that occurs. But I got to give our players credit, and those guys that have filled in and played with not a lot of playing experience have, have done remarkably well, and and uh, got to compliment our coaches in terms of how they've recruited to get uh, get our program where it's at with depth. Uh, with this next touchdown pass, Tyler Shelton's going to be the program leader in that category. Can, can you, can you talk a lot about Tyler over the last? Uh, year plus, but but again, can you talk about what kind of added dimension he's been able to bring to your offense over the last year, year and a half? Yeah, um, the leadership role can't be overstated because uh, he's been so great at his uh, leadership, and you know he's not a loud individual. Uh, you don't hear him out there uh, yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. Uh, and I think players appreciate that. They know he's a very business-like guy, and that's what's been able to help him produce the kind of statistics that he's uh, produced. You know, he just goes right on to the next play, and that's something that we've tried to work very hard on getting everyone in our program to do, and so he's a great example of that to our team. And, um, and his toughness is appreciated, and, and so he's got the whole package, and he's got the ability to run, got the ability to throw, he's got great uh, leadership uh, ability, great natural skills, so um, he's, he's what you look for. I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but he plays like a pro, that kind of the way that you know, he's just very... Very business-like, yeah. Uh, I guess that's a, a good way of putting it. Um, you know, you, you never see him out of control. Um, you know, obviously there are times when 
when, when maybe he's a little disappointed or he's a little elated, but, but he's always managed that very well and kept that well under control. And um, I think that's what most pro, pros try to do. And um, I think that's the best thing for a guy in, in terms of long range, uh, how, how he plays. And um, it's certainly the best way for your other players to build, uh, build around your, your quarterback to have someone in place like him. Uh, Coach, kind of sticking on the leadership topic, now that it seems that two of your four captains are seemingly done for the season, is there any need for other guys to step up and take that leadership role? Well, we did uh, put together a unity council this year, and so, you know, there's 16 to 18 guys on that unity council, and so those guys are supplying great leadership for us. And, you know, the one thing we've always done wasn't done since we've been here is encourage leadership in all classes. You know, you don't have to be a senior or an experienced guy to be a leader. Uh, you can be an underclassman and be a leader. Jordan Thompson, for example, as a freshman was a was a leader in, in how he did things and, and what he was all about. And so uh, we have several guys like, like that on, on the team that are young guys. And um, we've got, uh, obviously, uh, by being elected to the Unity Council, just gives you an idea that that those guys that are on that are, are also great leaders. And there's, what develops is more expectations. And um, you know, those guys that are on the Unity Council are, are expected to do all the right things. And, um, and, and if not, then, then you shouldn't be on the Unity Council. And, and so there are expectations that go along with it that help build leadership. What type of injury did uh, Thompson suffer and how do you expect to fill in for his production? Um, a, a knee injury and you know we've been playing three other uh, tight ends uh, you know Hill's gotten a lot of playing tight time um, uh, Tyler Knight has gotten a lot of playing time Gary Groback um, is obviously an experienced guy in our system from playing last year as well as this year and, and so um, you know we've, we've got guys that, that will have to take more snaps now because of Jordan being out but I, I think they're capable guys but you know, Jordan's not easily replaced. He's just a tremendous blocker and developed into, into a receiver that not only was a short uh, throwing guy to, uh, on crossing routes, uh, but also is a guy that could, could go deep and catch the over the shoulder catch. And, and so, you know, obviously all of that put together is, uh, is missed. Will this impact your ability to go to the t two tight end sets as much as you have this year? That's kind of been your your go-to personnel? Yeah, so I, I don't think so. Um, you know, if we if we would lose another tight end, uh, then that would that would you know uh, drop us down a little bit. But uh, but with three tight ends, I think we can pretty much operate as uh, as we've been operating. You guys ran the fewest plays of the year Saturday. Uh, any had an importance on maybe picking up that tempo or moving forward, I suppose? No. Um, you know, when the other, other team controls the ball as well as they did mm -hmm. and converted third downs as much as they did, you're just not going to have the ball as much. I mean, the first downs were 30 to 16. Mm -hmm. And so you, you just don't have as many opportunities. I was pleased with what we got done with the number of snaps that we had. You know, our third down conversion rate on the offensive side of it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we were keeping ourselves on the field. We did get, a, you know, a couple turnovers. That was crucial in the game. We had great field positions. Some of our scores came quickly um, and uh, on, on some of those drives, not, not counting the mm -hmm. kickoff return, but on drives. We scored very quickly on a couple drives. And um, then that gives the ball right back to them. So it, it's okay to have 67 snaps if within those 67 snaps you're getting done what you want to get done and, and we were we were doing that for the most part. Coach Jess Patterson had that electron kick return. Can you talk about what he brings to this program and the um, just and he's still he's only a true freshman and just what how big of a player he can be in the future? Well he's a very confident uh, player, you know, and he's he's got skill. He's got um, excellent quickness. He's got good hands. Um, and he's got good toughness, and so all that comes back to uh, him uh, having a chance to, to be a really good back as he continues to develop uh, in, in the system. 